Welcome to the Underground Reptiles Outdoor Breeding Facility. <clears throat> this is where we produce all our tegus, our blue tongue skinks. And we want to take a few minutes and explain to you guys about one of the uh, more prolific tegus that we breed called Chacoan Whitehead Black and White Tegus. Uh, some people call them uh, Chacos, some call them Whitehead, some call them Giants. Um, they are not Argentines and they're very different. Now, the origin of these is has been uh, a lot of you guys that are into tegus and looking on the internet and everybody's got their opinion but I will tell you where they come from and, and whether people that are on the internet like it or not this is where they come from um, some 20 plus years ago burgundy reptile traders uh, Mike Ellard imported a bunch of Paraguayan black and white and, and red tegus that's where we got our original stock and a lot of them wound up at the old pet farm in down in Miami uh, Mike Powell's down in Miami um, and uh, when they had their um, hurricanes and stuff like that and a lot of them got loose now that's not to say there probably isn't some Argentines out there there probably is but the vast vast majority I haven't I don't even think we've seen any Argentines I haven't seen them. I'm not saying they're they're not there but I just haven't seen them are the Paraguayan black and white tegus they come from um, an area right in the coast in the in right right down by the rainforest area they call Chaco and that's that's where they occur uh, they have a much lighter head than the Argentines and um, there are some other differences but to the untrained person they're insignificant but the babies when they hatch out are totally different now some of the characteristics if you walk this direction here let me show you this is a, a classic example of a Chaco black and white giant how whatever you guys want to call it look how much wider almost marbleized his head is he's got the skull like effect to him where he's got the um, the uh, what do you call it bands down the, the the lips his back almost goes back to a marbling now for us it's mid-may uh, all of our females are laying eggs all our males are looking to fatten up to go to sleep again because they right now they finished breeding they've way finished breeding they they uh, they're the first ones what we do with those things is we winter our males and females together for you guys that are looking for some tips on how to produce these things I think we produce a lot of them we've been really really blessed successfully and, and we don't pull back our information we don't care if you're watching a video to get some info it makes no difference to us we think there's enough business to go around for everybody and we don't have to put down other people or hide information but we winter ours together and then first thing that happens in, in uh, early uh, April, even late March, is they get up and they start breeding. I'm sorry, late February, early March, they start breeding. And then by the first part, mid part of April, we started to get eggs already right into May. Now, uh, we've got probably seven or eight females that have already gave us eggs this year. And we have two more to go. You can tell by the flags. We put flags on the cages that have the females in it that we think are going to lay eggs soon that way when I'm out here at 2 or 3 in the morning checking for eggs I know which one it is okay so is a Chaco Whitehead giant black and white tegu good for you as a pet it's an excellent pet animal now we house our breeders outside which makes them pretty aggressive but especially the ones that we have raised inside they're dog tame they're baby tame animals they spend their whole lives very tame um, I can actually take some of the ones that are outside that, that, I've, that I've raised inside bring them outside and they're still fairly tame uh, when they're outside we've got a lot of videos on food and care uh, starting them out with uh, small arthropods crickets cockroaches worms uh, you will even cut up some chicken parts for them but here's the thing guys for you guys that, that followed and, and had questions about food right now mice rats are so cheap you can get them from so many good dealers including our own website we sell them very cheap there's no reason to be feeding them chicken parts right now I was doing it for a while because it was uh, financially more expedient it, it was um, it was easier to get but now there's so many rats out there this year we didn't feed any any chicken parts to any of our tegus uh, and it's not, not a nutritional thing we enrich them with vitamins it's just definitely a healthier to feed them the whole package uh, to, to start them out in a 20 gallon and move up as they get bigger making sure they got plenty of UV because they have very thick bones very important to get 
metabolic bone disease really bad we've seen some animals that that haven't been taken care of that are really really bad um, look at this female over here look at the nice banding on her now she keep in mind just laid eggs so she looks a little deflated that's why they have that characteristic spot right under their shoulder blade some bigger than others they've got the scaling almost a modeled pattern down the back beautiful spotting on their thighs but again look at the head the head is a white and black gray mixture beautiful animals we take good care of them we love our animals and if you're looking for a really nice pet now why would you how do you choose that, that is a good thought I just had. how do you choose between the tegu that you want what tegu do you want do you, do you want a black and white tegu or should you get a red tegu should you get a blue tegu well you base it on what you like when babies come out they got this beautiful green head they've got these look these incredible hues of, of all different rainbow colors to them and you buy one that you like if you're looking for something a little smaller you get maybe our purple or blues they seem to be they're running a little smaller if you want something a little rarer you go for the albino or the head albinos or some of the crosses tend to have a uh, uh, what they call a gigantic gene that's the non-technical term for it and um, they tend to be bigger when you get the crosses um, if you like the color of the black and white you get the black and white it is one of the cheaper ones uh, that we have especially you can check our website for the prices and we are always running specials um, and, and you could always get them from the local chain stores but please know this when you buy a tegu from underground reptiles we will specifically tell you where the animal comes from what sex it is what origin it is and most important is it captive animal or not you can get a lot of the wild coat ones out of Miami. You can get a lot of the imported uh, um, Argentine ones. And there are some really good breeders out there, guys that are producing nice quality stock. There's plenty to go around. If you're looking for a nice captive animal, Chacoan Whitehead, Argentine Black and White, Argentine Red, Paraguayan Red, Red and White, High Red. We have, you can check our website for all the different kinds that we have. We've got lots of them, and all of ours are 100% captive bred, and if they're not, we specify that we did not breed this animal, and we either do or do not know the origin, and that's worth a lot, because a lot of people that are buying their tegus later on, they find out, oh, my, my tegus back legs aren't working, you find out that the parents didn't have a proper vitamin, or um, the female wasn't fed properly, or she was an import, and they don't know the origin, and all these other problems that can occur. Sometimes they don't. I've gotten imports that are just perfect, but if you're looking for finest in captive tegus and the biggest variety we hope you give us a shot because we really want your business and we really respect it of course